All right, Revelation Wellness Community podcast listeners, I have another friend today for you. Her name is Bonnie Gray, right? Bonnie Gray, I was going to say it's with an A, not an E. Bonnie Gray. So good to be here, Alisa. Bonnie, we're so grateful to have you. Uh, We're always combing the internet and places and listening to what God's doing and other voices that are out there. And we came across yours and thought, we need to have this conversation. So everyone, Bonnie is the author of the book, Breathe, 21 Days to Stress Less and Transform Chaos. But she is known for being a soul care mentor, coach. All, we're going to talk soul care today. And I know I was saying to Bonnie before we went live, I think we just assume you all know what that is. But today we want to really talk about it, unpack it again, because there's so many misunderstandings, I think, about soul care or, or fears or what does it really mean? So Bonnie, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I love being able to be here with you because I know that you're a kindred spirit, mm-hmm. how we feel in our bodies and how we can experience God and his peace is so important. And sometimes it gets lost because we get busy or we're just fighting fires and just yeah. making sure that everybody we love is getting taken care of. And yet We forget that God, his heart, when it comes to soul care, he cares about how we feel and how we feel does matter to God. Yeah. Can I ask, let's give us a little context of how you got to be where you are. I always love a little bit of testimony or story that got you to where you are. Yeah. You know, I have never had never experienced anxiety or depression up until the time I became a mom. And so I was your kind of natural, positive, cheerful type of personality. I grew up the oldest in my family. My father left when I was seven years old. And so I'd known God as a little girl. So the faith that I had known was a faith that was more like overcoming faith, you know, despite the obstacles, despite the hard difficulties, I kind of pushed through with my faith in God. But I didn't know until I started having anxiety and panic attacks when I became a new mom, that faith is also used to rest. Faith is also used to heal. And faith is also used to take better care of myself. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm able to say that now, Elisa, but when I first started having anxiety and panic attacks, that's like foreign language. It felt more selfish to me to think about myself. So I don't know if those are you know, all the sisters listening to us right now, it's something very common. Studies show that women suffer from burnout more than men. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Well, we often, it's what psychologists called overly responsible. Mm -hmm. We more naturally will focus on taking care of other people, but then we forget about ourselves. And we figure, well, as long as I can push through, I'm not, you know, physically not able to do something. I'm just going to put my heart to the side. And this is something that each of us learned at different times in our life. For me, I learned it as a little girl, Elisa, because we, I did come from a broken family and my mom wasn't a loving mom. So for instance, what I mean is this, for instance, when my father left that I remember the day he left. And I was so confused because his bags were packed. He was leaving. And I said, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you leaving? He said, well, your mom doesn't want me here. So I'm leaving. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, I got so scared and I started crying. Mm -hmm. And my mom says, why are you crying? Mm -hmm. Why do you want to go leave with your dad? Then go Mm -hmm. pack your bags. And of course I was crying. Then I was really scared because now my mom might not want me. As I started crying, she's like, if you stay here, I don't want you asking anything about your father. Wow. And you're lucky to have a roof over your head. Mm -hmm. So stop crying. And right then and there, Elisa, that seven-year-old little girl self stopped crying. And I said to myself, that's right. He's already gone. What is the point in crying? And I share this story because each of us has a moment like that in our yeah. lives. It might be have maybe have been during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how I feel. I need to just get things done. And we put our heart to the side. 
But here's the beautiful thing. Jesus says, come to me. Yeah. Those who are very heavy laden, I will give you rest. Yeah. Jesus says, it matters how you feel. And I want you to take action mm. to help bring your body and your emotions rest. And so this was a new language I had to learn, Elisa, because I never learned it as a little girl. Mm. <laughs> There's yeah. nobody in my life to say, it's okay, Bonnie. Um, you're really stressed. I can tell. I want mm. you to know that it's more important for you to take a break. Yes. <laughs> talk to me about what's going on. Nobody had done that for me. And suddenly I found myself as a mom and a mom as moms, we just pour out ourselves mm, seven by 24. That is the truth. So when you first started to come to the realization, well, it was the anxiety. So usually, you know, the symptom shows up and then how, how long did it take for you to get down to this the, just that it comes from a deeper place of never being feeling safe or heard or using your voice, you know, like how, what took you on that journey to realize, oh, it's not just, I have anxiety, not that we're anti-medication people. We think there are times and places for it, but we tend to try and just mask it. What was the journey for you to get down there? Like, how did you discover your own soul, you know, uh, disintegration? Well, you know, this is one of the things I love um, to share. It's a soul care quiz ah. that I created because at the time, all I understood was I'm stressed. Yes. Yeah. And we all have different physical symptoms. Um, some of us uh, find it hard to sleep at night. We're exhausted mm -hmm. and we're tired, but why can't I fall asleep? Mm -hmm. And the second thing for me was my hair started falling out. Wow. Yeah. And I didn't know why. And for some of us, it's different. Some people might have eye twitching. Some people um, might have their um, pain in their joints flare up fibromyalgia. Everybody has a different physical symptoms, but the body is the last line of defense. And so I never knew that all those emotions I put to the side of being strong, I didn't know that they were still inside me. Those, yes. those emotions that were hurtful for me yeah. because I just ignored them until my body, the way God created our bodies, it's a last line of defense. God's saying, I created your bodies to let you know that you need to take time to take care of yourself. So once my body started happening at first, I just tried to fix it. Yes. Does that make sense, Elisa? Yes. I tried to fix it by thinking my way through. And so that's the first myth of soul care mm. that we miss, which is that we feel it's selfish or we don't have time for it. And so we look at the way our bodies are designed by God. I always try to think my way out of, of stress. <laughs> and so the soul care quiz is something yeah. I created after I had to learn that there's actually four different areas of wellness I had to learn about. Tell me those. Tell us about those. Yeah. And as I list them, um, Elisa, I'm curious for you right now, which area do you feel you are missing the most? Great. And listeners, you can think about that yourself. Yeah. There's emotional yeah. wellness, spiritual wellness, physical wellness, and social wellness. Mm. And so I got mine. When I was okay. When I was stressed, you know, I would just think I'm stressed overall and it becomes overwhelming. You kind of feel hopeless because sometimes you read those articles and it's like, oh my gosh, well, I can't, what, what would I even start with? But if you know, which one area is your greatest need, yeah. then it can lower the stress and you can focus on, you know, just addressing one area. So out of emotional wellness, spiritual wellness, physical wellness and social wellness, which area, Elisa, do you feel yes. you need you most fulfilling? Yeah, you, you hit it on the last one. I think, uh, especially since COVID, uh, and then the growing, ever growing ministry and everything going online, I am aching. I can feel it in my bones of aching for actual real living, breathing community to know and to be known not just to inform and teach, if that makes sense. So mine would be social. I love it. You just 
helped clarify really importantly that you are teaching, you're informing, you're leading. That is actually um, when Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul mm. and strength. So when you lead, when you teach, when we lead or teach, whether we're parents or we're working, we're single in ministry, that comes from the heart. So the heart in scripture conveys devotion mm. and service. We serve from the heart and making choices, the mind loving God with our mind. That's where we study scripture. That's the knowledge thinking part, but there's one area it's loving God with our soul. And that's what we're talking about. You said my bones are aching for connection with real people. Yes. And so that is social wellness. It's not about socializing. It's saying, I'm not doing anything for anybody. Mm. I'm purely experiencing doing something that brings me peace or joy with and in fact studies show one to three is what lowers anxiety the most one to three one what? to three close friends ah so not in a group yes but one to three is that number these are love from that. social scientists love yes that. and it's interesting I, I i love to talk about scripture that backs it up and i know before we start on our podcast we hopped on you said yes let's do the scripture all and the, the science. scripture all the scripture all the science yes yes so three is a special number because when jesus was in gethsemane during his darkest hour he took three of the disciples mm -hmm. peter james and john during his transfiguration up in the mountain is peter james and john there's something special about that number. There's an intimacy there. So during the darkest times that we face, we need somebody, allow somebody else to be in that space where they can hear our tears, just like Jesus was vulnerable, allowing them to see him, you know, cry in his most difficult moments. Mm. And then also transfiguration during those times where we're trying to figure out transitions in our life. It's so confusing. Do I go left or do I go right? We're being changed. There's some changes. We want those one to three people that we can share our hearts with. And then in Proverbs, it's, I love this. There's a passage that says that two are better than one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we fall down, we can pick each other up. Many times you might hear that in wedding ceremonies, but actually that passage was for travelers. Really? Back in the ancient times, everybody walked from place to place to travel and when people are traveling, they're exposed to the yeah. elements. Yeah. Yeah. And it says a cord of three strands is not easily broken. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So three is a very special number when it comes to our social wellness. And um, so that's the scripture behind the special three that once I read this uh, sociology report. Love that. I thought, hey, what does scripture has to say about this yes. special yeah. number? And that number is so, uh, that sits well, even I was thinking of my, my daughter, um, it's an even number once you put, well, if you put added to three, I guess that would be four. I, maybe then the question is, if you have three girls in a room, sometimes there's a tension, but maybe that tension's on purpose. Um, but I, I think that anything over those numbers do get kind of overwhelming. Definitely when I say I'm looking for, all right, my soul aches for that. It's not a lot of people. It's a few people that can be, um, you know, just know to know and to be known by. Yeah. So love that. Yeah. I love that you have that. That's, point. that's a good question. Uh, could comment because, you know, when I was, uh, before I had panic attacks, Elisa, I, uh, I was a Bible teacher in my church. I was leading ministries. I had so many community where there are large groups, but even when I had coffee with people, it was supposed to be talking about the Bible study. Yes. It's like a working coffee get yeah. together. Yeah. And I realized I didn't have space where, you know, who would I call just to like, you know, have over for hanging out or who would I even call just yeah. to say, you know what? I'm exhausted. I'm tired. I'm really stressed out about X, Y, or Z, it, it, it seemed hard for me to figure out who would I call? Yeah. Did you figure that out? Did you eventually find a resolution for that in that season of when you're leading so many? Well, I think that 
that was kind of the beginning of soul care. I realized that I can do a lot of things with others, but I realized I wasn't so good about developing friendships where I felt like I didn't feel the pressure to have to feel like make somebody feel like it's worth their time (laughs) to spend time with me. Yeah. Or make decisions or kind of lead out and, and carry the yoke or weight of something. Yeah. Yeah. So that points uh, that pointed me actually to the first area of emotional wellness, because, um, let me, let me give the uh, URL for soul care quiz, soulcarequiz.com. Okay. Soulcarequiz.com. And you'll be able to get a score. There's 21 different stressors. And as you're taking the quiz, you won't know which stressors land in which area, and then you'll be able to see the results. So mine at the time of having anxiety and panic attacks were coming from emotional wellness. Okay. And, And so I had to address the emotional wellness first to enable me to learn how to find people that were, would be good matches for me for Mm -hmm. social wellness. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. emotional wellness, um, is about how many times we put our emotions to the side. So it's really hard for me to, it was very difficult for me to know how to even talk about how I was feeling. Because most of the times I talked about what I was doing or helping others to do things. Mm -hmm. Yes. I first had to learn for myself, you know, how would I pay attention to my own emotions? Yes. So we often hide our emotions, but here's the myth. We try to feel better by thinking our way out of stress. And that's just the way I was. I was, I just didn't want to bother anybody. I, I just didn't want to be a burden to anybody. Yes. So usually I just try to problem solve, but our brain actually has two different types of anxiety. There's left brain anxiety and right brain anxiety. So left brain anxiety, the left brain is used for problem solving. Mm -hmm. It's the logic part of our brain. Mm -hmm. This is what we lean on heavily as leaders, teachers, parents. It's the logistics. It's the teaching left brain part of ourselves. And so um, we often lean on that during the daytime. There's the right brain. The right brain is the emotional part of our brain. Mm -hmm. This is where we feel our emotions. Mm -hmm. And this is also where we have our five senses. Mm -hmm. We experience our five senses. So touch, taste, um, hearing, um, audio, sound, and sight. Thank you. And so a lot of times we stay in our heads. That's the left brain. But let me ask you this, Elisa, which part of the brain do you think lowers anxiety? Um, I've, I think I, because I would, my instinct says the right side. Yeah. Your instinct is correct. Yes. Yeah. Although my brain wants to say the left side, like my logic wants to go, Oh no, it's left. If I figure things out, then my anxiety will go down. But I know my instinct is it's to get more curious and wonder and more creative in thought, not so rigid in rules and knowledge. So a lot of times that's where we get the negative self-talk, which I did a lot. I would never talk to anybody this way, Elisa, whether it's my kids or my friends or anybody, I would never say to them what I say to myself. Mm -hmm. So when I was, I'm stressed, my natural default is stop worrying, get it together, Bonnie, Mm -hmm. just focus on what you need to get done and stop you know, feeling bad about yourself or worrying about these things. Like, why are you worried? So I, I did a lot of shaming myself. Yeah. But it made sense because if you grow up kind of like having to take care of yourself, that's, that's the only thing, you know? Yes. And especially as you know, women in our generation, we we're, we're just so self-resilient, self-reliant. We're so yes. capable. We go to the left brain first. Yes. But what actually studies show, science studies show, what lowers anxiety, stops the cortisol, that's the stress hormone, Mm -hmm. from being released into our system, and what releases serotonin, that's Mm -hmm. the relaxing hormone, feel-good hormone, Mm -hmm. is going to be the right brain. And you can only activate it by using your five senses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the myth is we try to think our way through stress, 
The truth as, is we need to nurture our way out of stress. Mm-hmm. Love that. Amen. That's such a good so word. That's an example where I didn't know how to do that, Elisa, because when I was stressed, I would just try to actually do more things off my to-do list or try to think of how I'm going to respond to the email or work on my curriculum or, you know, if I get more done, I'll feel better. But when my body started having anxiety and panic attacks, um, it wasn't working. It actually studies show it increases anxiety. So if you're anxious or feeling down, if you try to fix the problem by thinking or doing more, it actually increases anxiety and deepens depression. That's amazing. So I had to learn that I need to activate my right brain, which is using my five senses. So something very simple. This is a soul care tip. It sounds so simple. You think it's not going to work. That's how I felt is taking a 10 minute walk. Yes. Tell us more about that. I know that uh, you talk about that in your book. Do you not in breathe 21 days to stress less and transform? Yes. Yes. You know, some of those things that are seeming really, really simple that I'm going to talk about these soul care tips, we might know them. Remember the left brain, we know them, but do we, we don't do them. That, oh, you are preaching to the choir. I say we don't need more information. We've got plenty of information. We think that information is going to make us feel better and, and make us feel, uh, okay, I'm, I'm that, that helps me, but it's actually acting on it and doing it. The one thing we can't get to other people, they have to actually act on it. Yeah. So because, you know, I, I always like to tell people it's not that, oh, I wanted to do all this soul care. Trust me. Like that would be the last thing I want to do. Like, you know, I was like, God, I don't have time for this because look, I have two little kids and, you know, I have a book, I'm an author. So I need to write my book. And then I have the, you know, teaching on, you know, Wednesday nights with the women, like God, just, I just kept praying, please God, take away my anxiety. Please God help me sleep. But it wasn't happening. So I I was forced. I said, okay, I will go take a walk. (laughs) It seemed like the simplest thing. I'm like, is this what my life has come down to God taking walks? Is this really what it is? Yes. But exactly that's what started happening. I would take that 10 minute walk and I'm outside and then, oh my goodness, I started really having honest conversations with God and I would feel better within just 10 minutes. And I learned that you don't even have to believe it'll work because the way God designed our bodies, once you start moving it, the brain will release serotonin and you will feel better. So I teach this all the time. Don't wait until you're in the mood Mm -hmm. to do anything that's good for your soul, whether to bring you peace or bring you joy. You're not in the mood. That's why you need to do it. So once you (laughs) start activating it, your body will release the hormones that God created that will lift your mood, lower anxiety, stop cortisol, which is the, you know, fight flight hormone that gets you stressed out overthinking. And then your body will feel better. So, um, that's actually my signal, Elisa, when I, whenever I say to myself, I catch myself, I don't have time or I don't, I'm not in the mood that lets me know I need to take a soul care action. That's so good. Love that. Tell me about what do you tell or say to women who struggle with soul care or that it seems selfish? Uh, How do you help reframe that or give uh, greater understanding around that and, and why it matters? I guess the first thing I want to talk about is what is soul care? Yes, let's do that. Yeah. So soul care is the practice of letting God nourish and tend to our bodies and emotions Mm -hmm. the way God intended when he designed our nervous system. Yeah. So I talked about the greatest commandment. There's love God with our heart, mind, soul, and strength. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got the mind. We study scripture. We've got the heart. We're serving our family, serving others. We've got the strength. We're really good at pushing through persevering, but the soul is ignored. I would read this verse and I would even realize, God, I guess I never even realized that word. So soul care is tending the garden of your soul. 
you know, the garden, you have to nourish the soil. And we see this metaphor in scripture all the time, the importance of, you know, the condition of the soil is going to determine what grows, right? The seed, there's a parable of the sower and the seed. So the soil, that's your heart, your soul is very important. I named my book breathe because there's actually a, over a thousand references to the word breathe in scripture. Mm. So right now in secular culture, breath work and yes. mindfulness is the go-to method of lowering stress and anxiety. And I said, well, God, what is your word have to say? Because I had anxiety. I said, God, I need to learn what your way is. Mm-hmm. And the word breath, the root word of soul is actually breath. Mm. And it means psyche. Mm-hmm. There's a thousand different definitions of breathe and breath in scripture reference. One of them is soul. It means psyche. And it's the basis of the word psychology, meaning your personality. Yes. Your exactly. unique what makes personality. You. Mm-hmm. Yes. So what gives you rest, peace, calm is going to be different from me. Yes, that's good. And the only way to experience that is going to be doing things that give you peace and joy. And that's where the selfish part kicks in because we often, as women of faith, we feel like peace or joy can be a byproduct for us. Like, okay, well, I'll I'll do this if it also benefits and serves others. And if I get something from it, then that's an added bonus. But we struggle with doing something purely for our benefit of joy and peace. Why is that? What is, what's behind that? Well, first of all, because in the way we grew up in our culture, um, you know, we feel our worth is based on what we can either produce Mm. or whether we're able to care for others. This is very normal and natural. Very, very normal. That's part of us as human beings. We want to have a purpose. We want to be able to know that we matter to others. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's wonderful. But Jesus is very radical because he says, come to me, those who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest for your soul. See, he doesn't say rest for your mind. Yes. He says rest for your soul means you personally. That's good. Lisa personally, Bonnie. What, what helps you light up? What gives you comfort? There's a verse I love talking about. It's from uh, 1 Corinthians. It says, we comfort others with the comfort we first receive ourselves. Mm-hmm. The order, notice, is comfort we first receive ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's like putting on the, the oxygen mask. We have to put on the oxygen mask first in order to then help others. Now, many times we stop at Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. We don't read Matthew eleven twenty nine 29, because after Jesus says, you, you will find rest for your soul. Jesus says, learn from me mm-hmm. for I'm humble and meek. And he says, and you will find rest for your soul. Mm-hmm. So there's action there. So many times we feel we, if I pray hard enough, God, you will take away my anxieties and worries. That is just step one. Mm-hmm. There's step two, because Jesus says you will find rest. That is an action. That's an exploration. It takes time. And it also takes the dare to believe that you're worthy of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. So, so to answer your question, kind of like through the scripture that I was trying to show is that the heart of it is we need to ask ourselves, do I truly believe that I'm worth the rest and the peace and the joy, even if it doesn't do anything for anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. And don't you think that uh, it would be such a great thing to start with our kids because our kids understanding, I think this is hard for us as adults because no one gave us this permission that it's okay to do something that white quote might look selfish or be celebrated for um, the fact that we've drawn something or done something that it doesn't have, it's not going to, it doesn't attach to our worth. It's just beautiful and wonderful. And also for the parent to call out how that might make you feel as a little kid, like, doesn't that make you feel, don't you enjoy that feeling? And like speaking 
uh, kind of watering the soil around that seed of soul care? Because I just don't think we learned this as a child. What would you say to the parents who are listening that, although we didn't understand this as kids, so that's, I think we just, again, exactly, I think you're right. Like it's our value is in what we do and it feels selfish. What would it look like to start raising up a next generation to understand that a soul care that isn't selfish, that is actually a safeguard? Well, one of the key verses that I received when I was having anxiety attacks um, that made me feel selfish, um, and I know this person was well-meaning because I was very afraid because I was a leader in my church, I was a Bible teacher, and um, I was afraid what would it mean if I shared with somebody I was having panic attacks. Well, unfortunately, this, this first person I confided in said to me, Bonnie, you must not be trusting God in an area of your life. Oh, <laughs> because Psalm 46 says, be still and know that I am God. Bonnie, you need to be still. You're doing too much. And so at that moment, I felt so bad. I said, oh no, I must not be trusting God. I'm not being still. But after I did practice stillness and silence and prayer, I was still having anxiety attacks. And so I double clicked on the scripture and I want to share this with everybody. And it's, it's related to about how I parent now. Okay. But the phrase be still is actually loosen your grip. Yeah. Slacken. Slacken. And relax mm -hmm. literally. And then to know that God is God, that is not a left brain intellectual knowing the root word is actually yada. And it means experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in order to experience God's peace and joy and comfort, that's what we need when we're anxious, worried, or depressed, we need to take action to do things that help us to relax. Good. When we relax, that's how we can experience God. So, mm -hmm. you know, that walk I told you about Elisa, mm -hmm. when I started, um, you know, seeing the trees and feeling the, the, the breeze touch my face and the sunlight and looking at the clouds moving across the blue sky. I felt so moved by that beauty. And I experienced God's peace. Amen. That's right. Good. So when we stress out, when we're anxious, it's going to relate to the parenting. I first had to learn it for myself. Okay. I need to do something in that day, or if not, that day wasn't possible. The next day I would prioritize doing something that gives me peace or joy. Or if I didn't know what that was, I would just ex explore. So that's why breathe has 28 different um, ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause for those of us who is, are used to being productive and, you know, really good at serving God and others, you know, like most, I do soul care coaching. Most people are like, Bonnie, I don't even know what I would do if you're asking me, yeah. you know, I get an hour free, like, so we need to just know that it's okay. Jesus said, learn. It's just learning. It's open word. Like you said, curiosity. So anyhow, so what I do now before, when I used to parent, my son comes home from school, he's grumpy, he's grouchy, or, um, you know, like I said, well, why? He tells me it's his homework or test. The first thing I used to do, Elisa, is I would say, why are you worried? Just get studying. <laughs> let's plan it out. Let's get let's get your schedule. Problem out. solution. A, exactly. B C. <laughs> exactly. You know, you know, stop, stop or you know, worse yet, if his attitude is bad, like, you know, this is a bad attitude. That's why you're not able to figure it out. You know, I would just focus on change your attitude. Okay. This is not a good attitude. And I start lecturing him. Why? Because I was focusing on left brain. I figured if I can teach him the right thing to yeah. think. Yeah. He's going to feel better. Well, guess what? All that does is make him feel worse. Yeah, that's right. Right. The right brain, his right brain is completely stressed out now. Yes. <laughs> so what I do now though, it's changed because I started applying it for myself. I'll say, oh my gosh, you must have had a really, really long day. Oh my gosh. Tell me about your day. No, I don't want to. Well, okay. Well, just like, what would you say was like, the worst thing that happened today. Well, nothing. Okay. You know, but I'm talking to him. I'm asking him questions and then we're going to take an action. So for instance, you know, I would say, Hey, you know, um, we've got those uh, Oreo cookies, have a break and just showing him care and concern, uh, pour him some juice or whatever it is. And 
mind you, my son is 17 years old. <laughs> so, you know, it's not babying him. It's actually what we would do, you know, for a good friend. Yes. Nurturing. Talk to him. And then, or I'll say like, you know what? Um, sounds like you're going to have a tough time today finishing that project. How stressful is that? And this is really key. This is part of social wellness is telling our children, our stories. Hmm. Studies show that when we share our stories, it allows people to develop resilience. Hmm. So what I would do, I would say like, you know what? I totally get it. I said, I remember in high school, you know, this terrible teacher I had, or this terrible project, I didn't know what to do. I shared a story of how I struggled. Yeah, that's right. And I didn't share the solution. I just shared how I struggled. Yeah. And I said, so I know how you feel. I'm so sorry. It's the pits. This is going to be tough. Ah, terrible. No wonder, you know, I just let, identified and validated his feelings. Now, I just want to throw this in. UCLA, UCLA had a brain imaging study. They had participants view videos of people that were experiencing negative emotions, mm -hmm. fear, anxiety, mm -hmm. anger sadness. And as participants were viewing these videos, they hooked their bodies up to biometrics and guess what? Their bodies responded with stress. Blood pressure went up, heart rates went up, pupils started dilating. Mm -hmm. They had them watch the second time, the video of the negative, uh, people experiencing negative emotions. The only difference is they asked them to name the emotions they were viewing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just naming it. And guess what? Their blood pressures went back down. Their heart rate went back to a resting place and their body started relaxing. Yeah. Yes. So That's naming good. what That's right. is stressing you the yep. way God created our brains, we were not made to just hide our emotions, hide our frustrations and just cover it up and move on. Our bodies, our nervous system weren't made to just move on. It can hold it for a while temporarily. That's called being in survival mode. It'll hold it temporarily, but eventually the body needs to express it. And so that's like one way to develop this with uh, my children. Rather than problem solving, I'll just ask them, help give them words as to what's stressing them out. Now, in the past, I would have not wanted to do that because I felt if um, I was afraid if I just talked about what was stressing them out, it would stress them out more. Yes, yes. But I learned it's the opposite. That's so good. That's good. That is good and a practical tip you can give to everyone. We can take that and apply it today. I love that. And I will be as my daughter is home for summer <laughs> from for her college internship here. It's so good. And I also liked how you asked, like, how can we start a new legacy? Um, because as I started having anxiety and panic attacks, I had asked the therapist, I had to see a therapist because mine was very severe. Every two hours at night, I was uh, waking up choking with panic attacks. I couldn't breathe. Hmm. And um, I asked him, well, why is this happening? And I was kind of doing through my list of like all the things I was doing right. And he stopped me. He said, Bonnie, this is a classic case of PTSD. Hmm. And I said, well, I'm I only knew PTSD related to soldiers. So I said, well, I, I'm not physically in harm. I have a loving husband. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm not in any danger. And he says, well, did you know that a soldier doesn't experience anxiety or panic attacks when he's on the battlefield? Hmm. When a soldier is being strong and resourceful and helping others, he does not experience anxiety or panic attacks. Yeah. When does a soldier experience panic attacks? When there's still when there's no emergency when there's yeah exactly when they are back home and safe mm -hmm. so many people listening right now you may be wondering why is this happening and i want to free you from any uh shame or because that's how i felt i felt ashamed like well why why is this happening is it because my faith isn't right is it because i'm not praying enough in fact it's just a nervous system functioning healthily Earlier, there was a time, perhaps it could be the pandemic or, you know, your child's health scare or your own health or a tough season in employment. I don't know what trial you have been strong to get through, but the body at a later time will need to heal. 
And so that's what was happening to me. And once I understood how my body was working, the way God designed it, I did not feel ashamed anymore. I said, oh, okay. That's All right. the things that I overcame as a child, now that I'm in a good place, safe place, in a good relationship, at a peaceful time in my life, God is saying, it's time now for you to heal. Exactly. It's time for you to learn how to take better care of yourself. And so that. that freed me. And I love sharing that um, important life-changing moment because I, yeah, I just didn't understand it. Um, and so I started a new uh, direction in my life. I said, I'm going to now prioritize soul care. So for instance, I had a whiteboard and I bought a whiteboard from Ikea and I said, okay, everybody, uh, brainstorm all the things that bring you joy that make you light up. Yes. And everybody put everything down. And by the way, when I first started this, the kids were really little, so they couldn't even read or write. So I drew stick figures. <laughs> okay. So yep. this is okay. One, one kid wanted to go out for ice cream, drew an ice cream cone. You know, another kid said they wanted to ride the train. I drew a little train, but the important part is I included myself and my husband. Yes. So we all put down things we like and personally or things that I never tried. Cause when I grew up, I grew up below the poverty line. I never got a chance to do, um, I would say a lot of fun things. I was an old soul, you know, grew up quickly. So there were things that like, I'd never done before. Like I'd never had, you know, like, uh, you know, simple things like uh, ice, what do you call it? Like shaved ice. Yes. You know, I, I never got to do that. I never had tried that. I'd never been to DQ with, you know, a dipped cone. I know it sounds so simple. I, I never picked peaches before, you yes. know, th these sound simple, but God is saying, you know, the child in you is the greatest kingdom in my kingdom. The faith Amen. of a child is the greatest. So as we put these things down, I said, everybody circle your favorite one. So everybody would circle one favorite one, and we would put them on the weekend. So they would be scheduled every okay. weekend. So we do four. So every weekend, no matter how crazy the week went, we all knew by the end of the week, we would do something fun together. Yes, that's good. And it's continued now to when right. they're teenagers. That's good. That's a great legacy. That's something we could practice right now. Well, Bonnie, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for blessing our community. You guys can find out more about Bonnie by going where? Tell them where to go. Yeah, just go to soulcarequiz.com because if you take that quiz, you'll get all the information about the podcast that I host. It's called Breathe the Stressless Podcast. You'll get information about my newsletter and you can find me on Instagram at the Bonnie Gray. Awesome. Bonnie, thank you. We enjoyed our time with you and we are leaving with better health soul, health of soul. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks for watching and remember this video was brought to you by Revelation Wellness Instructor Training Program. Do you love Jesus and have a passion for fitness and wellness? Or maybe you're tired of the roller coaster of obsessing over and neglecting your body and you know there has to be more to fitness. Let us equip you to lead others to health and wholeness rooted in Jesus Christ through our faith-based fitness instructor training program. Go to our website to learn more and listen to testimonies of people just like you who are bringing hope and healing to their communities as fitness teacher gospel preachers. Click the link in the description of this video and download a packet to get your journey to health and wholeness through Christ started today.